All right, everybody, welcome to the stream here. I am Jared Hawkins, a.k.a. Jayhawk. This is the WWE Universe mode for WWE 2K22. We're doing WWF 1983. That's going to be week two of May here. And here is your lineup offense. Kika against Tony Gurria and Eddie Gilbert. Bob Backlund against Ray the Crippler Stevens in a non-title matchup. Mill Mackerick and Jimmy Snuka defeat, uh, to take on... I hope they defeat this team, but Mr. Fuji and the Destroyer. SD Jones taking on Chief J. Strombo. That's an unusual matchup. And then the Fabulous Moolah, the women's champion against Leilani Kai. Your five matching here. Let's go ahead and start the show. And do our insanely um, it long 1980s neon intro here that probably means nothing. Any day now. Of course, it doesn't appear to be any uh, rival rematch in here. Now we got our fireworks and see our 1980s VHS. I love that. Social media has been buzzing all day with notifications about the big matchups that are set for tonight. I cannot wait for this event. Yeah, guys, I'm not sure what it is, but there's something in the air. It feels like it might be one of those nights that changes everything the here in WWE. Backstage, Corey has been growing with every minute. Everybody's rare. A little distracted by something else here. I'm sorry. We're going to go ahead and get going, though. Your opening contest tag team match. That's one I know that there's a 15 minute time limit associated with. They all should have a 15 minute, uh, either a 10 or 15 minute time limit associated with it. I'm sorry, but based on where the controller icons are here, it really look, Eddie Gilbert look, look more like Dan Lane or Steve Curran or the fabulous ones, like he's wearing a bow tie. I, a little weird. Of course, everybody is a custom superstar here with one or two exceptions. Because you're going to see the long low time before the first matches start. Okay, there we go. Go ahead and get that started here. They are ready for battle. The following contest is scheduled for one fall on the way to the ring, accompanied by the Superstar. At a combined weight of 668 pounds. The WWE World Tag Team Champions. The tension building for this match is so. And the Wild Samoans, Appa and Hika. Drama involved with this one. Are your are your tag team champions here? They're accompanied by Lou Albano, who is not in his wrestling gear for any in particular any particular reason, aside from the fact that I just didn't change his outfit when I cut the cup. Tony Gurria and Eddie Gilbert. Every time they compete, but tonight might be their best lesson yet. This could, this should be an interesting matchup here. A couple of teams who came out on the losing end in episode one. 
Tony Greer and Eddie Gilbert lost to the makeshift team of Bob Backlund and Paul Orndorff. Orndorff moved up to the number one contender for the world title with that with that win somehow. But I don't think there was any real major surprise of the title changing here. And there you have the 15 minute time in the counting down in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And what we're attempting to do for TV magic as much as possible. 10 minute time left for single 15 for tag team matches. And we'll move from there if we need to. There's the knee drop to the arm by Afa there, working over Tony Gurria to start off. Goliath Samoan was an interesting loss in week one. They, the makeshift team of Mill Mackrick and Jimmy Snuka defeating the Wild Samoans in week one. Mackrick and Snuka are now a full-time tag team in this universe based off of that win. And well being the number one contender and hopefully the game recognizes that and moves them into title contention sooner rather than later. Tag made here uh Gika. Of the wild Kimon. He's gonna head up to the middle rope. Uh -oh, Tony Green might want to move. Greenboard Moonfall to the back. I'm not sure why this whoever created the Kimon gave them all the flippy floppy stuff. They're doing a bunch of moonfall and stuff like that that they've never done. Or even the Uto don't do a lot of flip. They, even though they can fly, they don't do a ton of flip, but he thinks he has it. Gilbert's going to go for the cover. It's too early for the pin here, I think. Not even a count of one, although the referee did take a dear sweet time. If we talk about Knook and Masterist defeating the Clones in week one, that's not looking the biggest upset in week one. The biggest upset in week one, the Tonga Kid. 17 years old, defeating Tatsumi Fujinami. Fujinami shaking the hand after the match. Ah, there was no way that should have meant even in video game logic, but video game logic. Twists the arm and a work in the arm and a kick right to the ribs. The damage he's taken is starting to give up his control on Kiki here in the early going. Alpha had not had a lot of damage done to him. Kiki had quite a bit of damage done so far. I don't know that if I would have made the tag that early here if I would go over to Korea. That worked over pretty hard by Alpha. There's a flying elbow there by Kika, and he's gonna try to make the tag to Alpha. There it is. Now that was a good tag. Korea whipping Alpha into the corner. And the overhand chop, overhand chop again. Overhand chop again. If you are watching this on Twitch live, we do appreciate it. Hop in in the chat. Hey, hello. Ask question. Comment on what you're seeing. Those of you watching on my YouTube channel, you can follow me on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Ref Jayhawk. Follow me on Twitch. Get the notification when the stream go live. Contribute to the chat. The streams are a lot better when we get some interaction with the chat there. Code red there by Alpha. Alpha going for the half box and crab. You think too close to the rope. Now, looking obviously it's the video game, but in a regular match here, they would just reach up and tag your ear and get himself out that way. But not going to get that in this situation here. Gilbert now going for that left arm and kills. Taking the page out of the Moen playbook. Going forward again. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And then you see the countdown clock in the upper right hand corner. 11 minutes and 20 seconds remaining. 15 minute time in the match. Look at this. Oh, that's so painful. Hard to watch, too. Stretching and tearing at all the ligaments in the leg. He's feeling the effects of that last hit. Tag is made here, too. Can he do it here? 
Tony Guerrero is going to go for a quick cover here. I don't think he's going to get off off of that one. No, he's not. Kind of one. He's far from finished. My goodness, did you hear that shot? Gilbert looking for that fifth tag team title ring with his fifth partner. Oh, look at this. Out to the apron. Yeah, we're going out to the apron. Gria, go, I, I'm sorry, going out the apron with them, dropping them on the apron with a back suplex. Remember, they have a 10 count on the floor to get back in the ring. We're talking about Offa and Gurria, typically here since they're legal men. Offa's going to go ahead and get in the ring. Gurria still outside the ring for whatever reason. Going to go after Albano? I don't know if I do that. Get in the ring. Off of for Kim Rican going for the tope with Gita. He didn't have to do that. Probably could have gotten the win because Gita had to go after Albano instead. Going out of the ring, Rick started the count. There's the snap duplex. Kick right to the back of the leg. Trying to question the strategy here at this point. Adelaide head kick about I, I do I don't know who did the. He were the best looking Samoans I could find. That's why I went with that route, but the move that is not anywhere near historically accurate. So, yeah. Off in the ring. Off I'm gonna go back out of the ring for the reason. Why? I don't understand the AI of some of these games. I really don't. There's an elbow drop. They're going down the aisle here. Oh, no. Inverted DDT. He now just looks helpless to every attack. Yeah, and this has to decrease his composure moving forward. Oh, and there's a the heated drop kick here. You gotta think of if Korea and Gilbert can pull off an up in this non title match, they'd invent that they would be in line for a shot at the Tag Team Championship. Yeah, his instincts are taking over. Now, Gurria making a mistake here. He's going after Albano rather than trying to get back in the ring. There's the suplex. Now we're at Kevin. We might get a double count out here. Stop, uh, Tiger Bomb. Get in the ring. There's the count of nine. The referee took a dear sweet time doing that one. Now Afa gets in the ring as Gurria goes out on the apron to go after Kika again. Why did Gurria do that? Oh my god. And now you're seeing the reason why I want to make sure we had 15 minute time limits on the tank team matches. It's looking ridiculous. This match is probably over if they keep it in the ring. Honestly, if I'm Kika, that's what I do. I would just keep working on Gurria and keep him until he gets counted out. Get the win any way you can get it. Oh, Gilbert is fresh in the far corner. If Gurria ever had enough sense to get in the ring, stay in the ring and make a tag. Alpha in the ring at five. Stay in there. Let Tony get back in. Oh, Jika. He went for a springboard leg drop, of all things. Didn't hit it. Gurria instead of tagging out to Gilbert, going after Pika. Why are you doing that? Unbelievable. The rating, if this match ends now, the rating is two stars, and that might be generous. This is, and this is horribly bad psychology, green psychology here. And Gurria focusing on Kika on the outside instead of going in the ring to go after Alpha. Alpha's going to come back out after Gurria. Oh my god, this is bad. I'm sorry, folks, this is bad. I'm expecting some of the other matchups on the card to be much better than this. Please stay with us, but... Stay in the ring, Gurria. Alpha shaking off the cobweb, not going in right away, which is smart. Which, this can be smart move as long as can get back in the ring. We're at five. Eight minutes in the match, the last four of it's been spent on the floor. What? 
It was like 15 seconds between the kick and the seven count. The referee is garbage. This is unreal. This is just unreal. This is just unreal. This is just, this is just hilariously bad at this point. At this point, at this point, either do a double count out or get in the ring and end it. I, I, I don't. You know, when I'm getting bored with the match and I'm the one running the stream, there's a problem. Which is the up end there. Alpha is in at the count of kick. Stay in the ring. Let either like get area, get in the ring, or take the count out. Seven. Korea should make it back in as long as he's given the opportunity to do so. All right. Finally, we're back in the ring. Tough position to be caught in here. Not going for the Kamoan drop, going for a power bump back out to the floor. Are you kidding me right now? You have got to be kidding me right now. Now back out on the floor. Alpha got caught by got caught by Eddie Gilbert, but Suplex can go for trouble. Green going back after Alpha. Get in the freaking ring! Oh my God! In what universe is this? In what universe is this considered good AI? Tweet your complaint about this match to at WWE Games. Let them know that computer AI and tag team matches suck. If I wanted a match beyond the floor for 10 minutes, I would have just booked this as a fall count anywhere match. I don't, uh. We're past the 10 minute mark, less than five minutes remaining in our time limit here. This is not an Iron Man match. It's the, the first, it's a one fall match. Alpha is in the ring at four. Garia's going after Albano for no apparent reason. Well, for the fact that I know Alpha's going to go out after him before he, before we actually get the count out, I just can't screw it and stay there. But tell me. Count of Kevin Gree is finally back in. We have a little bit over four minutes left in the time. If somebody go for a pin, the match is probably freaking over at this point. Gree with the takedown. Driving off into the canvas. There's a cover too close to the corner. If Pika wants to, oh, well, I kind of won anyway. If okay, Pika wants to make the save, they're right there. And there's the tag. To Pika. Rhea deciding to pose rather than go for the win. Getting Korea to the turnbuckle here, to the top rope. Gurria countered that. I don't know what he could go for exactly, but Gurria countered it. And now the boot great. Gurria looks like he's trying to win it here. Reverse neck breaker. Kika is down. He's trying to pull Kika away from the corner, which is a smart move. I don't know if he's far enough away from the corner. Alpha should be able to make that cave. One. And that's how we're getting one. Three again off a tumbling to the floor. Kick it now to his feet, though. Got the kick to the knee. And going for a snake eye in the corner. And a springboard moonfall with an unrealistic foot. Uh, un uh, I'm done. Kika is going for the pin. Gilbert's not making anything to make the cave. Somehow, Gurria kicked now. 
And we have just two and a half minutes remaining in our 15 minute time limit here. Move Colt. Try go for try pin him right there if he wanted to. Instead he's gonna tag an offer. Why not? We might be getting our time limit draw. Gilbert not coming in to make the cave. Oh, that was very close. Gurria barely getting the left shoulder up. Two minutes remain in the time limit. Off of going for a snap duplex. Not sure what off of going for there. Gurria countering into a dragon screw leg whip. He's not going to get him off a dragon screw. The fact that it was that close was a small miracle, let's be honest. You know, with 90 seconds remaining, Gurria finally tagging in Eddie Gilbert. Gilbert is not going to get pinned. As long as Gilbert is in the ring. Oh, I could be wrong. I may, I may have spoken too soon. There is no way that should have ended like that. There is no way that should have ended like that. Off of pin Gilbert, despite the fact that Gilbert literally did nothing for 10 minutes and was fresh as a daisy. Two men with one common goal can be a dangerous thing. They're putting the entire locker room on notice. We're in the final 90 seconds for the 15 minute time limit. Unreal. Just un just unreal. The only thing I'm doing here is double checking. We've got the 10 minute time limit on it. Why are we back on the start show, Green? Okay, that's fine. It is going to be Bob Backlund against Ray the Crippler, Steven. I don't think Ray Steven got any shot against Backlund in 82 and 83. I'm not sure why that would be the case. Match would have been really good. I think they would have drawn pretty well. Here come the Tadori to be a champion. Is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Minnesota, weighing in at 274 pounds, the worldwide wrestling heavyweight champion, Mr. Bob Backlund. Bob Backlund, the Worldwide Wrestling Federation Heavyweight Champion, wearing the big green belt. 
man holding the title on the, in the, at the center plate, the side plate has the name and title reign of all the previous champions. Gentlemen, I think a fight's about to break out. And his opponent from San Francisco, California, weighing in at 239 pounds, Ray Stevens. Well, if their previous Ray Stevens, the crippler. Then this competitor One of the greatest wrestlers in the history of the business. Their in the Twilight Hit career. Right you are, Saxton. I don't know what else I like this move with the either based just based off the entrance, but bit about pain in the process. it's just an entrance. Alright, whatever. There's the bell, we are underway. One fall with a 10 minute time limit. Rick even for the Spanish fly right off the bat. I hate these moves now. Am I going to edit them? No, I don't have that kind of time. I'm, I'm too lazy for that, but. Hate some of these moves now. Back when now with a double on underhook suplex, butterfly suplex, it's sometimes called, very nicely done. He's got the shoulders down. Too close to the rope. Even cut it with the foot underneath the bottom rope there. Well, it's been a long day. I'm getting sick and tired. Golly, that sounded rough. What a shot. Forward to the face. Oh, nothing fancy about that. Was ready for that. Backlund pile driver. Very nicely done. He's looking a little off balance. I'll tell you. It's nothing he hasn't been through before. Gotten. Holding the shoulder hostage now. Counters, this could be an opportunity. Oh, countering out with a kick. Yeah. What in the bloody hell is that? And there's a takedown. It's Ray Stevens, oh, not Tiger move. Mac. But what in God's name are these moves that? Unbelievable. I got freaking. If I wanted to vote Bob Backlund against Christopher Daniel, I would have done Bob Backlund against Christopher Daniel. This is insane. Uh oh. Systematic attack on his shoulders are dead. Drop to the shoulder there. Backlund's foot underneath the bottom rope, not going to get the cover there. Flying head kicker. One, two, and he got him. In just two minutes and three seconds. Here is your winner, Ray Stevens. Impressive win for him here. This really felt just two minutes and three seconds. Ray Stevens, the crippler. Your winner. In the division on notice. And that statement was they're here to win, Saxton. All right. And it looks like it's going to be a rivalry match here. Steven beating the champion should make him the number one contender. One and a half star for the match. Well, it went two minutes. What do you expect? All right. Tag team action upcoming. Which should have a 15 minute time limit. Is the number one contender for the tag team championship, Jimmy Snuka, Mill Macker, taking on the unlikely team of Mr. Fuji and the sensational Intelligent Destroyer? This match will be coming up momentarily.
We get the blue loading bar finally going on here. Still waiting for this to load. Just about ready. I'm, I'm not, I hard to kill time with a freaking loading screen. If you're watching live, hop in in the chat on Twitch. Be happy to answer your question. Be comfortable about what you're seeing here. Those of you on YouTube, make sure to follow me on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash ref Jayhawk. Get the notification for when these streams go here. live. Take part in the conversation. The following contest is scheduled for one fall on the way to the ring. At a combined weight of 545 pounds. The moment this match was announced, the WWE Universe has expected a classic. I think it is destined to deliver. A very unlikely tag team, but they beat the Wild Samoans last week, leading to this matchup. And their opponents first from Tokyo, Japan, weighing in at 217 pounds, the Superstar. You know, this person takes some pride in their work. Oh, well, Mr. Fuji. You are as gifted in the ring as this performer. Wow, you are laying I believe it's four-time tag team champion. Two different partners. Sure two reigns with Toro really Tanaka. Ten times and Benjamin. two reigns with Mr. Kaito. Back recently at December of 1982. At this point, Kaito is with the AWA after going back to Japan briefly. In about a year ago, Mr. Fuji would start to become a, would start to become a manager. George Ann will steal. Of all people, Mr. Fuji's first client and the manager. They teach Fuji being a manager all the way back in January 1983, and they wound up being the number of 84. And from Buffalo, New York, weighing in at 255 pounds. The Destroyer! The WWE Universe has been counting the days. The, the Conventional Intelligent Destroyer. The countdown is on his way into the ring here for this matchup. He said he'll be making a statement in this Bonafide match legend in the professional wrestling industry, especially in Japan. The first American to wrestle full time in Japan. After a match against Ricky Dogon in the early 60s. Eventually working for All Japan, for All Japan. Okay, you got 15 minutes time that up. One of the hallmarks of sports entertainment. That's right, Colin. As a former tag team champion myself, I have to again say destroy our one point. One of the top dark in All Japan. Now, what with Mill Macra? The story of Mill Macra actually had some matches in Japan, some one-on-one -on -one matches in All Japan Pro Wrestling in the 70s. Gets him with the counter. And this might surprise people who followed Macrick's late in career, but the Magic were actually pretty good on top of it. Now, Macrick, I expect to have some high flying stuff, some springboard moves, and things of that nature. Not necessarily flip, but. Yeah, it wouldn't be as out of the ordinary for Macrick like it would be for some other people. With the bottle the back duplex, bringing him down, nicely done. Tag is made a snooker. Snooker with a standing shooting star track, because he did that move a lot. When he... Again, not Not as egregious for coming like Snooker to do this type of stuff, although he didn't do the flip. There's 
the takedown. Well measured. A stiff kick. In off the tag. Nacker can cook up a quick tag early on here. There, Fuji with the tag to the destroyer. Being hit first action here. Now, kind of the unofficial rule I've been going under here. We get a makeshift tag team like this with Fuji and destroyer. Should they win their match, they would get a become an official tag team, and I would move them into the tag team division. The exception to that, of course, was the Bob Backlund and Paul Orndorff team. In our first up, it's going to be a Backlund into world champion. You can't exactly lose the world champion out of the world title division. I am sorry, I should be yawning in the microphone, but I am exhausted, man. I actually got quite a bit of sleep last night, so I shouldn't be this tired, but... Keeping an insane work schedule. Oh, right hand, uh, Fuji. And by Fuji to Macdrift. Fuji with a nice little combo there, inning with that super kick, but he got caught that back elbow. Now kick to the mid catch and shot to the back of the head. Double leg -like takedown, going for Scorpion Deathlock. Oh no. Oh, that. Oh, into the stomp. I expect Macri to do some of those type of commissions, but not getting them. Yeah, there could two count. A little bit, do a little bit more damage. You might get the pin there. Fuji wisely tagging out to the destroyer. The destroyer works onto his leg, tries to go for that figure four leg lock. And for those of you questioning how the destroyer. As well, here's the cover first one. Only a cover one. For those of you questioning why the destroyer would be in this mode, he didn't rep one in WWF in '83. He absolutely did. He got for the number of house shows locally in upstate New York. Up until about July or so of '83. It's hard to believe, but it looks like he still has some gas left in the tank. They're not making any TV appearances that I'm aware of, but. Quite a few house shows. Macro fleeing in the destroyer around, making the tag to Jimmy Thucker into the third time here tonight. We hit the three hour and third. I think yeah, the three hour. We hit the three minute and thirty second mark. Airplane spin. Nicely done. Swing them around on the other way now. Make yourself dicky with the cold if you're not too careful. There's the cover. Macker was not coming in for the save. He tried to snook on after that move. Look at one getting counted too. There's the story going for that figure four leg lock. That kick bread and butter. Macker's going to make the save. That could have been all she wrote with that one. Face slam down to the canvas. There's the tag to Fuji. Now Fuji needs to remember Nook up the legal man here, not Macro. He's got him scouted. How's that for a cat? Need a mid section. Rolling elbow. Bending forearm. Now Fuji covering Snooka. He's ejected from the ring. Gonna get it. That this tag team division is in total turmoil there. Here are your winners. And the winners celebrating together. Great chemistry tonight. The wrestling gods have Fuji pinning Snooka. I fully expect to see more showings like this going forward from this duo. I gotta think we have another full-time tag team in our midst here. If Nook and Macro should have been in line for a shot after beating the Smolens last week, but now they've been upset by another new team, Fuji and the Destroyer.
we go to our next matchup here. A unique matchup I don't believe ever took place. Going to be FD Special Delivery Jones. Taking on the Indian Chief, Chief J. Strombo. Couple of guys who never quite made it to the top of the card in WWF. Look, I got, okay, Strombo got, got close. Did get a couple of shots in Superstar Billy Graham for the title of Kevin Kevin. Well, one of the rare title of Fed game for the Iron Sheik. Through the Sheik short run in 83. But Strombo pretty much the guy you beat to get the, the to get the Cam Martino and that beat you on your way down from Cam Martino. FD Jones, very called mid card type of talent. I don't know if he would have been at that intercontinental title level ideally. I think at single quite, I think he pushed about how he was gonna be pushed. Might have given him a tag title reign. Might have just might have used FD Jones instead of Tony Atlas, the team of Rocky Johnson, if I would have been the one booking. But I say that as somebody who doesn't make the rule, not an actual booker. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from the Caribbean. Weighing in at 261 pounds. The Superstar. This is a match that folks have been clamoring for. Little, little everybody got the superstar moniker here. But it is at the special delivery Jones yeah. on his way to the ring here. That's a little heelish. Yeah. Did whoever make this never see FD Jones for a cool FD Jones a fun baby fake. Go to Merchant North, then buy your shirt, buy your thing. It's going to be happening. Game face on, ready for a major battle. Here's the Chief, Chief Jake Trombo. Doing a board in from the ring. From Oklahoma, weighing in at 275 pounds, Jay Strongman. This superstar has actually told me before that they can be the only draw a man if not Trombo, but you gotta do what you can do. Gotta do what you can do with the option the game gave you. Which is why you I would think if guys were in the Hall of Fame, time. their name would be in this game as actual audio, but apparently not the case. One fall with a 10 minute time limit here on television. Who has seen a lot in the ring. With experience comes That's D. Jones going for you can throw Oh, nicely done. Spitting him around, clamping him down, nicely done. That wisdom in this matchup. But he'll be taking on an individual now picking him up, going for a running power slam. Okay, FD Jones might get a quick win out of here. One. And he the count Only the count of one. Think this match was close to over. I'll have to look at the replay of that opening tag match to what the exact time of it was. Gonna go down at the longest match of the, of the universe so far. It was between 11.30 and 12 minutes. It's going to be the longest match of the card by default. Oh, man, nicely done by Dusty Junk. Look at the strength. Carrying him around, dropping him down. Nicely done. Dusty Jones might get a quick one here. Going all the way up top. Nicking the elbow, though. Jumbo getting out of the way there. Jumbo opportunity. 
Drombo, multiple time tag team champion. Heart champion uh, tag team with Jewel Drombo, his alleged brother. Also a tag team with Kenny King in the 1970 who won the tag team championship. Stomping the leg. Stomping the leg there by Chief Jake Drombo. Chief did have a son who ruckled. Ironically enough, the ruckler who ruckled at Chief J. Thrombo Jr., not Chief J. Thrombo Gun. Thrombo Gun was a preliminary ruckler named Mark Young. Wore red, white, and blue tight, and had a breakdancing gimmick. Ruckled a little bit for the NWA in 88, a little bit for the WWF in 89. Kind of disappeared by the time 1990 rolled around. Did not make it in the business. Had some potential. Drombo pounding away on FD here. On for the cover. One, two, and only a count of two. And this match has actually gone longer than the Ray Stevens Bob Backlund match we saw earlier. Drombo now up, up quickly up to the top rope. Looks like, looked like he was going for a flying fifth drop. Got the head. Landed that looked like he landed the headbutt. Chief getting into that right now. into that war dance. And there's the sleeper hole. That Jumbo bread and butter. Feeding a lot of in with the compact. Swallow your pride and submit. Just hang on. Hang on for just a little. And he may have found the script slipping. Did not get the commission off of it. He actually had to let go of the hold. F.D. Jones started off John, but it's been all Chief J. Jombo for the last minute and a half or so here. One, two, there's the three count. Three minutes and three seconds, so this one doesn't go very long at all. Chief J. Jombo is your winner. Drombo going to celebrate his win here, and we're going to get ready for our, again, that TV in 1983. I don't want to call it the main event, but it's going to be our final matchup of the stream here, the final matchup of the episode. And it's going to be the lady getting there for the main event in WWE Universe mode here. The women champion, the fabulous Mula, taking on Leilani Kai. We'll go ahead and get into it here. You can edit magic and storyline by choosing rivalry compatible when customizing. Didn't did not know that was an option. I'll have to keep an eye out on that. We didn't have anything coming into this that labeled like a rivalry. No. Ready to get dark this one. This woman is the real deal. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring from South Carolina, the women's wrestling champion. Everyone in this match is competing at such a high level. I predict one of the most competitive Abby matches Mula, we've seen in a very long WWF time. WWF Women's Champion. Doesn't matter if the title's on the line here tonight. This woman lives to compete under any circumstance.
from Tampa, Florida, Lillian Carey. The WWE Universe more than ready to see this one start. This Lilani is Kai good. coming to the ring here. Looking at a non-title matchup. It's one fall of the 10-minute time limit. Determination in her eyes. She is more than ready for competition. And as this match gets started, we're now looking at We're underway. One fall, ten minutes. This is our final matchup of the episode here. The fabulous Mula Leilani Kai. Fabulous Mula in our first week. Defeated Penny Mitchell. In under three minutes, two minutes and 49 seconds. That was the shortest match last week. No longer the shortest entry of the stream. Leilani Kai looking the longest match of last week's show. Teaming with Invader number one to defeat Moondog Spot and Susan Star. 10 minutes and 14 seconds for that matchup. And Kai with an advantage here in the early going. Been a pretty evenly fought back and forth match here. The diving knee drop going for the cover. There's the moonfall. There's the cover. Maybe she knew that wasn't going to put her away, but it definitely kept her down for a beat. Taking a moment to get pumped off of this crowd's incredible energy. And look at this now. Yes, applying the submission hold. And a cobra clutch by Lilani Kai. In trouble, in Turning it into a cross face. It could be an uppercut. Tap, 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 tap. What does she have to do to get out of this? My phone blowing up all of a sudden here. I apologize for not necessarily being the... Most, uh, I'm not paying the most attention I should here. Uh oh, their opponent's all but helpless right here. Matt knees just exerting dominance over there. Mula, uh, nice move there, Ramula. Here he can the back into the full away slam. That's fantastic. The there, can count a two. Working on that knee, working on that leg. Heel up locked in. This is painful. She's forced onto the defensive now. <laughs> no touch. Nasty. Well, in complete control at this point here. Good luck for Brim Buckner. Oh, Kai countering out of it into a relief German. She still fights out in one. Still has a great amount of fight in them. Not going to let it end like this. Superman punch by Leilani Kai. I don't know where that one came from. And she, she not a spring. Like everybody in this game do a free board moon call. Makes all the creative records do, apparently. Sidewalk slam. Strong kick. My goodness. She's got an answer for that. Up in the torture rack. Oh, man, the knee. The go to fleet variation. This might be an upcut. No, Mula kicking out two and a half. Wish my phone would stop blowing up while I'm trying to do the stream. I'm more, I've got a relative who's in the hospital. Every time my phone goes off, I gotta take a look at it, and make sure I don't have any bad news. A uh, Superman punch off the top rope by Leilani Kai. Remarkably even matchup left far here, about four minutes in. 
A 10 minute time limit for the television matchup. Dominated by Mula, that should do it. It will. Here is your winner. She did what she needed to do and came away with a strong victory. Mula win, 2 0. No far in the universe. Everything they could to earn this win. Going through the Women's division. Yeah, I'll go ahead and prepare for the next show. Okay, I'm going to review the recall real quick here. It was Alpha and Kika. Kamoa defeating Tony Gray and Eddie Gilbert. Ray Stevens defeating Bob Backlund in under three minutes. Mr. Fuji and the Destroyer defeating Jimmy Snook and Mil Nacra. Chief J. Trumbull defeating Etty Jones. Fabulous Muna defeating Leilani Kai. Getting to the next event. And you can see we have two events coming up next week. We'll have episode three of All Star Wrestling. We'll follow that up with some wrestling from. Pretty black, he is not going to end up wrecking. I don't know why I'm cycling through this because none of it matters, honestly. Let me go ahead and add the new tag team. While well, I'm thinking of it here, Mr. Fuji and the Destroyer. You've heard of Fuji Vice? Fuji Yakuka. I have no I, I have no better idea. Get to Fuji. Oh, for sure they have the have them under yep. Fuji Akuka, the new tag team, rather than Fuji Vice. Let's see if we can take a look at the standing at the rating real quick here. And it show. So Ray Steven moved to the number one contender by his by defeating Backlund, which makes sense. The Invader grew your number one contender to the World Tag Team Championship. That can happen in real life. Oh, that's great. We gotta put them in that division, don't we? Edit division. Chief J. Strombo is the number one contender to the Intercontinental Championship. Jump, he hopped over Chief J. Strombo with that win. And Leilani Kai, even with the loss, number one contender to the Moolah title. We'll save that. We'll save that. Thank you for joining us, everybody. We're going to hope tentatively playing a continue with tomorrow with that next episode of All Star Wrestling. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, you can follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash RefJayhawk. Get the notification of when we go live and join us live and join the chat. If you're watching on Twitch now, thank you very much for doing so. Watching on YouTube, thank you all for doing so. And I'll catch you next time.